Hello and welcome. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about some more examples of object motion with air resistance. So let's recall that we always start with our, our um, F equals MA, where A is acceleration, otherwise known as dv dt. We always start with some initial velocity. Okay, all right. And so, uh, okay, so what we can usually write this is actually dv dt, that's the A part, is equal to F over M. In this case, we always think of we're going to be including two forces. We're going to be including, in our examples, we're going to include uh, two forces. One, we're going to have our mass here. And it's going to have an FG of gravity, which is pointing down. So it's going to be equal to negative MG. And likewise, there's going to be another force up on this mass that's going to be equal to, uh, we'll call it FR. And FR is some function of air resistance. Okay, so uh, in a previous video, we studied FR to be a negative CV. Okay, where, where uh, uh, this, is, this is what we call a linear, a linear uh, uh, air resistance. So um, what we can do then is, is write this down. This becomes a negative G uh, plus FR. Okay, so FR. So uh, again, I'm going to go back to that linear case. I'll put that down. That's going to be our dV dt is equal to negative G. Oh, we have to divide by M there, sorry. And then we get C, uh, oops, minus C over M uh, times v. All right, this differential equation, I'm not going to solve it again, but just note that it has an equilibrium. Equal to the v equilibrium that we call our critical point is going to be equal to um, negative mg over v. This is also what we call the terminal velocity. All right, so uh, let's talk about this a bit. It turns out, though, uh, 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 that empirically, and this is just an observation, uh, from the field, and uh, that, that means uh, people who are involved in actually doing kind of aerospace or uh, any kind of object motion involving air resistance, that this model uh, that linear velocity, linear dra linear drag, is uh, not, uh, it, or maybe it's is too weak uh, for many fast uh, moving objects. And so what they suggest, or one suggestion is, so try a velocity like so. We're going to try an F R that's actually proportional to the square of velocity. So it's going to be that. We're going to put a plus or minus there depending on whether we're going up or down. Okay, And so uh, being proportional to the square velocity, what that does, what it means What it means is uh, uh, it's a more severe force at high velocities. So, I mean, how would one how would one gauge this kind of thing? So, obviously, like a wind tunnel, so if you have a fan like that. And you're blowing air, and you have your object, your uh, you know your mass is sitting there, you know, some sort of rocket ship or something, whatever it is. But you're going to be flowing wind over it, and then you'll have a little uh, some sort of uh, 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 um, some sort of measurement device that actually measures the that that force due to drag. That that force. So you'll actually measure the deflection uh, against some sort of tensionometer. 
that could measure that drag. And so as you keep uh, in ch changing the, the, the air, air speed, the velocity, uh, that air speed will, um, what, you'll, what you'd do is you'd plot some sort of curve. So you put velocity down there and you'd see that drag force empirically. And what happens is what they see is that for, it's linear at the start, but then it sort of starts ramping up and becomes more quadratic for higher velocities, okay? And so that's the kind of thing, that's how you'd actually perform this type of experiment to see. But so essentially for low velocities, linear works okay, but then as you get higher, eventually starts ramping up, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it beh behaves more quadratically. All right, so that's the idea. So let's now try to actually solve this model. So let's go back and solve. So again, we have our mass. We're gonna say it's falling, so it's gonna have a negative mg is equal to f uh, gravity. And then there's another upward force F, um, F, uh, R, and because we're f this is falling, we're going to put actually a positive C V squared. Okay, and that's because objects falling. Okay, and so we want the, the, the drag force to be upward, all right? And, and what we really mean by that is our V at time zero has to be um, less than or equal to zero. Okay, uh, and that's what that means. Okay, um, so we're going to start uh, and we're going to see how this works. All right, so we write down the differential equation. DV dt is equal to negative G plus C over M v squared. Right, I'm going to do a little little work working around with this. I'm going to put that negative g there. We're going to have a 1 minus c over g m times v squared. All right, so this equation we can solve via separation of variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide out this factor there and multiply over the dt to the other side. So we're going to get 1 over 1 minus g over c over g m times v squared dv is equal to negative g dt. We can integrate both sides as follows and add a plus c, but I'm going to put little serifs on it to contrast it from my, my drag coefficient c. All right. So now we have to integrate this side here, and I'll do that really quick, and that's just going to be negative gt plus capital C. All right, so the question then is, how do we do this one? Well, it turns out we're going to have to use, you know, look, in a, uh, look at a table of integrals. And what you're going to find is the following, that... Um, that d du of inverse hyperbolic tangent is equal to 1 minus u squared. Or rather, if you want to write it this way, the integral of 1 minus a uh, 1 over 1 minus u squared du is equal to uh, inverse hyperbolic tangent of u and of course plus some um, integration constant there. All right, so uh, we can use this formula. So what we're gonna do is set up our integral here. But now what we see here, I'm gonna actually move this inside and put that C over G M, and I'm gonna make it all a square root inside there, V, put that all quantity squared. All right, and then we have a DV. Now of course what I can do is uh, let u is equal to root c over gm times v. At du dv is going to be equal to root c over gm. And that means that uh, gm over c, all square rooted, times du is equal to dv. All right, so we can write this now in its place. 1 over 1 minus u squared. Uh, times root gm over c du, and that's going to be equal to root gm over c 
times tangent, hyperbolic tangent inverse of, and then we'll put back in there uh, the value for, uh, for u, which is going to be root c over g m times v. Uh, okay. Um, and that, of course, is all equal to negative g t plus capital C. All right, now, to finish this off, all we have to do is uh, solve for v. That's what we want. We want the solution, the v of t. So we have to solve for it. All right, and that's simply done, v of t. And that we, all we have to do is invert the inverse hyperbolic tangent and just essentially evaluate the, the thing at, at tangent once we do all the other algebra, of course. So let's do that. That's going to be... Um, uh, it's going to be root gm over c times hyperbolic tangent times uh, c over gm all square rooted times g, I'll put a negative sign there, times t, because I'm evaluating there, plus that constant c. All right, so there's our function. There's our solution to our function. So we want to know if, it, if it's behaving roughly correctly. Uh, so one thing I can do is actually look at equilibrium. Well, let's look at that equilibrium. If we go up here, you can easily see that the critical point, the terminal velocity, is going to be equal to what? Well. Uh, it, it pretty just solve this equation. You can find out that the the critical point or that terminal velocity is going to be equal to negative square root of g m over c. All right. So the question is, does this function also do that? So um, let's go. I'm going to go to a new page. Then we're going to write this down again, and and uh, and, and put it all in. Uh, so what we have here is v of t is equal to, oh, you know what, I might have just, I need to just, okay, we have, we have this root g over m over c times tangent, hyperbolic tangent of negative g times root, just want to make sure I get it right, c over g m times t plus capital C, which is an undetermined constant. Um, I'm not going to worry about right now, but let's just write down again what tangent, hyperbolic tangent looks like. Um, this may come to you or not, but let's just write down the hyperbolic tangent of u. Uh, it's going to be equal to e to the u minus e to the negative u all over e to the u plus e to the negative u. All right, so if I take the limit of t going to plus or minus infinity of this, you'll get out of it plus or minus 1. All right, and that's because the graph of tangent u, or hyperbolic tangent, it looks like this. Where it's negative 1 there and positive 1 there. Okay, And right at 0, uh, it's 0. Okay. All right, so it's a, it's a sigmoidal shape function like that. All right, so obviously if I'm taking t going to positive infinity, I get a positive 1. And if I take it to negative infinity, I go to negative 1. Or sorry, this should be a u there. Sorry about that. There we go. And now, if I take the limit of uh, v of t, we can see, and, and we're going to take that for t going to positive infinity. We see if I take that t to positive infinity, but there's a negative sign there, so really we're going in the negative direction in terms of the t inverse hyperbolic tangent, so we're ending up at negative root g m over c, which is precisely the terminal velocity. So to close this out, what I want to do then, of course, is compare this to linear drag. So in linear drag, Okay, and that means fr is equal to negative cv. In this case, the terminal velocity 
was negative g over m c, right? Now we're going to try quadratic drag. What we get from it is f r is equal to negative, or I should say, plus or minus c. In this case, let's just go with the plus c v squared. All right, and that's going to be our new drag coefficient. And what we get out of it, the terminal velocity now is vc is equal to negative root gm over c. Uh, so um, when uh, uh, gm over c is greater than 1, uh, note, so again, again, this is a case where um, the mass is large, the gravitation is, or basically gravitation is much bigger than m over c, uh, uh, then, so the gravitational force is, is large compared to, um, the gravitational acceleration type force is large compared to m over c. What you get then is that, uh, so I'm going to call that, this is going to be called c linear, and I'm going to call this quadratic. What we get is vcl is, of course, much, is bigger than vc Q, all right, and that and that again matches up. We said that the quadratic drag should be a stronger, a stronger, a stronger uh, force for large velocities. It should also be noted that the units of C are distinct for, uh, for the drags. Okay, notice that here, uh, to get a force out of a velocity, this, the units of C have to be different than if to get a force out of a velocity squared. Um, so obviously, the units here are going to be uh, um, uh, over a velocity type uh, um, uh, um, factor. Okay, so uh, oops, like that. So we have this linear and quadratic DAG, and now we see that how uh, making a modeling choice for these two, uh, which one one chooses, you get different results out of the system. So this, these are distinct. And the choice of using one or the other is really, is really an, you know, an art as much as a science. And it takes a lot of experimentation and a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, knowledge of the, your particular uh, system in order to choose a correct type of a drag force for your system. And these are two examples. Of course, there are many more. You know, uh, so we could also say, look at um, look at F R to be equal to C times V to the alpha, where alpha now could could range anywhere from zero all the way up to very large numbers. Okay, so this is a, of course a, a whole family of uh, drag forces, and and the use of one versus the other it would depend depend on. On uh, you know uh, the specific systems. And its operating region and so are. And that again you have to determine this from experiment. Okay, so I hope that clears up and uh, gives you some more examples of how uh, air, air resistance, and gravitation are modeled together to, to find uh, uh, velocity functions for moving objects uh, through space. Uh, thank you very much.